Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Oh, boo hoo, you little poor baby. The mainstream media is currently throwing a fit because they no longer get special treatment on Twitter. Oh no, you poor little snowflakes, what are you ever going to do? Of course, as we know, the mainstream media cannot exist without being propped up by the entire system, and just the sheer level of entitlement, I mean, it's so freaking pathetic. Recently, Elon Musk's Twitter has made the decision that they're going to be treating all news organizations equally, and that means state-affiliated networks and outlets are going to be marked as state-affiliated, not just the Russian ones, not just the Chinese ones, and and it led to a massive meltdown from all of these news organizations, like NPR for instance, after getting tagged as state affiliated, or government funded rather, decided that they were going to leave the platform. NPR is stepping away from Twitter and this includes NPR politics feed. Please read the thread to find other ways to find our work, including blah blah blah, here is wah wah wah. It's not fair that we're held to the same standard. We should have special privilege. Well, no longer is that the case, and this massive meltdown I guess the best part of this little situation that's currently happening on Twitter is after Elon Musk's Twitter marked the BBC, it led to the BBC getting in contact with Elon Musk, they did an interview, and, well, I think it's probably the perfect summation, it's just a real-world example to encapsulate why the mainstream media is just so trash. And also it plays into this whole entitlement thing, and this whole special media privilege. Let me show you guys exactly what I mean by that, we got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. Alright folks, so I guess we'll start off this video by saying Elon Musk meets the BBC. It went pretty much as you would expect. Take a look at this. Content you don't like or, or hateful? What do you mean to describe a hateful thing? Yeah, I mean, you know, just content that will solicit a, a reaction, something that may include something that is slightly racist or slightly sexist, those kinds of, those kinds of things. So you think if I'm, something is slightly sexist, it should be banned? I, no, is that I'm what not, you're saying? I'm not saying anything. I'm well, saying... I'm just curious. What you, I'm, I'm trying to understand what you mean by hateful con content. And I'm asking for specific examples. Um, and, if, and you just said that if something is slightly sexist, that's hateful content. Does that mean that it should be banned? Well, you've asked me, you've asked me whether my feed, whether it's got less or more. It, I'd say it's got slightly more. That's but, why I'm asking for examples. Can, right. you, can you name one example? I, I honestly don't need, I, I, honestly, you I don't You can't name I, a single example. I'll tell you why, because I don't actually use that for you feed anymore, because I, I just don't particularly like it. But you said actually, a lot of people, a lot of people are quite similar. I, I, I only, well, well, I only look well, at my, my following. Well, hang on a second. You said you've following. seen more hateful content, but you can't name a single example, not even one. I'm not sure I've used that feed for the last three or four weeks. And I, well, I, then I how did you, you see the hateful content? content? Because I've been I've been using I've been using Twitter since you've taken it over for the last six months. Okay, so then you must have at some point seen the you for you hateful content. I'm asking for one example. Right. And you I, can't I, give a single I, one. And, and, and I'm saying I've, I, I, then I, I say so that you don't know what you're talking about. Really? Yes, because you can't give me a single example of hateful con content, not even one tweet, and yet you claimed that the hateful content was high. Well, that's a false. No, what I claimed, you just lied. What no no what I claim was. Uh, there are many uh, organizations that say that that kind of information is on the rise. Now, whether whether it has on my feed or not, example. I mean, I, right, and Literally if you, you look at something one. like the, the uh, Strategic Dialogue uh, Institute in the, in the UK, they will say that. So you, they, Look, it's, people will say all sorts of nonsense. I'm literally asking for a right. single example, and you can't name one. Right, and as, as I've already said, I don't use that feed. But let's, well, then how let, would you know? Then, that I don't you, think you, this is getting anywhere. You literally said you experienced more hateful content and then couldn't name a single example. Right, and as I said, I that's absurd. I haven't, I haven't actually looked at that feed. I then how would you know this hateful content? Because I'm saying that's what I saw a few weeks ago. I can't give you an exact example. Let's move on. We have, we only have a certain amount of time. Um, well, wow. holy moly. Elon just ended the man's career. I don't think this guy, this James Clayton guy, is ever going to step foot in public ever again. But it takes us right back to the initial point of media privilege. People at places like the BBC, The Guardian, NPR, CNN, MSNBC, it doesn't matter. I mean, name the left-wing outlet, are the most entitled little establishment brats. And what I mean by entitled, hopefully I can describe this accurately or correctly, they feel entitled to narratives. Or they feel as though they have this special privilege where they can say things, set narratives, and not be challenged. And we see it over and over again whenever they're met by actual challenge, whenever they're met by real honest people, like Elon Musk for instance, they completely fall apart. You know, this special privilege that these media journalists have where they can just say things as if they're facts 
and not have to back them up. Oh, well, the prevailing narrative is that Twitter has essentially become 4chan on crack since you took over. Elon just responds with, well, what do you mean? Like, you can't just say something like that. Do you have an example? Have you experienced it? Oh, well, on my For You tab, it's nonstop hateful content. Like, what, overtly hateful content? Oh, well, you know, uh, just kind of stuff that's a little edgy, somewhat hateful. Elon then goes, so what's your point? Should we ban it? Oh, no, I'm not saying that. Well, do you have an example? Oh, well, you know, <laughs> we should probably end the interview. I wasn't expecting to actually have to justify, clarify, or provide sources and real fact-based evidence to support the garbage narratives that I was peddling. Yeah, you know, we pretty much already knew that. It seems as though the only person who was unaware was this BBC clown. You know, this is the perfect example of how these leftist narratives only really exist in these fake news chambers, these mainstream media vacuums, these very isolated, controlled spaces. But the moment you open it up and introduce oxygen to the equation, well, suddenly the whole fake news system is compromised now, isn't it? Now, of course, it's no surprise that I absolutely love meltdowns. Everybody knows this. We've been covering them for years. You know, I still miss the days of SJW meltdowns being one of the biggest YouTube entertainment sectors, I guess we could say. But honestly, there's nothing more that I enjoy than a mainstream media media meltdown. The BBC, NPR, and probably the CBC up in Canada as well are all freaking losing their ish. The politically correct way to say it. And of course you could tell exactly why. Their mask of neutrality has finally been removed. NPR has to be having the most full-blown meltdown. NPR is saying goodbye to Twitter and so am I. Our CEO writes, the platform is taking actions that undermine our credibility by falsely implying that we are not editorially independent. Find us anywhere else. Again, it comes back to that entitlement, that special treatment. These outlets are mad that they're finally getting exposed for what they are. Editorial independent. Give me a freaking break. 99% of people who work at NPR are Democrats are connected to the Democrats in some way. Most Republicans probably find NPR is a waste of taxpayer dollars. And so NPR's existence probably literally depends on Democrats holding political office and power. I mean, I just mentioned the CBC, the Canadian Broadcast Corporation, which really isn't a corporation at all. The Canadian government spends over a billion dollars propping up the CBC. It's basically a Goliath in the country. No independent news corporation can compete with it because it's totally subsidized. And again, they pretend as if they're editorially independent, but they're not. They carry water for Justin Trudeau. And the Liberal Party, the BBC, does the exact same thing because, again, their existence is dependent on big government leftoids. Oh, you poor little babies. NPR is big mad. Their credibility is being undermined by falsely implying that they're not editorially independent. No, dummy. NPR is government-funded media. You collect taxpayer dollars. And so Twitter simply wrote government funded media. I mean, look at the little tag. It says that you're government funded media because you're government funded media. Oh no, it's unacceptable. Uh, it's hard to take any of this stuff seriously. And honestly, pretty much the whole point of this video is Elon Musk keeps BTFOing the media, whether it's in interviews, whether it's with these decisions at Twitter. And I'm here for it. I love it. Elon Musk taking over Twitter has to be the best thing that's happened in a very, very long time. It's time to even the playing field. I mean, just like we know on YouTube, for instance, the mainstream media is totally propped up. They get special privilege. They're always on the trending tab. They're always on the For You tab or the Autoplay Next Up tab. Meanwhile, independent sources like myself and others are shadow banned. It's time that that change, that the pendulum shift. It's a beautiful thing that it's happening on Twitter. And you can just see how entitled these mainstream media networks are with the way that they react. Oh no, fair treatment. Give me a freaking break. That's what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.